El receiver for a single sideband modulation is a coherent receiver or synchronous receiver. In this video, we will analyze the need for this receiver and we will see the effect of a non-synchronous or non-coherent receiver. The received signal is multiplied with a cosine with the same frequency than, uh, than the carrier and then we have a low pass filter with the bandwidth of the modulating signal. Initially, we are going to consider that the phase of this cosine can be different than the phase of the carrier to analyze the effect of a non-coherent receiver. We will assume that the received signal is just the modulated signal. This is a, a single sideband modulated signal. With the negative sign here, we have the upper sideband and with the positive uh, sign we have the lower side band. The receiver signal is multiplied with the cosine. So we have the single side band modulated signal times a cosine and then we will use usual uh, trigonometric identities. We have here cosine times cosine and cosine times cosine can be written as one half cosine of the difference between arguments, the difference between arguments is the difference between the two phases phi and phi c. The phase of this uh, receiver and the carrier and the phase of the carrier. And then we have the other term one half times uh, cosine of the addition of the arguments. And here the addition of the arguments is producing a cosine with two times uh, the carrier frequency. Then we have the product between this sign and this cosine and sine times cosine can be written as sine of the addition of arguments where we have a sine of frequency two times the carrier frequency and minus sine of the difference between arguments. In this case, the difference is the difference between phi and phi c. And this is what we have here after the product with the cosine. Now, this product will be filtered with a low pass filter. In the frequency domain, if this is the Fourier transform of the modulating signal, this is the frequency response of an upper sideband single sideband modulated signal, and the product with the cosine produces two replicas of this spectrum, each one with half of the amplitude that we have initially here for the received signal and the addition of these two replicas is what we have after the product with the cosine. And the filter will remove these two components that are uh, components of another single sideband modulated signal, in this case, in this example, upper sideband, but with carrier frequency two times the carrier frequency. Therefore, this low pass filter will remove the components located at two times the carrier frequency. And these components are the ones associated to this cosine of two times the carrier frequency and this sine of two times the carrier frequency. Therefore, what we have here at the output of the, uh, of the receiver is just the addition of these two terms that are the baseband terms. And what we have here is basically some term that is proportional to the modulating signal times a cosine with the difference between the phase that we have in this receiver and the phase of the carrier. This term is the same one that we have in a double sideband modulation, but we have an additional term here. A term that is not proportional to the modulating signal, but to its Hilbert transform. Therefore, this is an interference and this term is multiplied by a sign of the difference between the phase of the receiver and the carrier phase. Here we have the same expression, the expression for D of T, the output of the, uh, of the receiver. And if we analyze the two terms that we have here in the first term, we see that this cosine can be understood as an attenuation term because we want to recover 
the modulating signal and cosine of the difference between phi and phi c if phi is different from phi c is a number that in modulus is lower than one the optimal choice is to have phi equal to phi c to have that the cosine is cosine of zero which is one this is the same effect that happened in the double sideband modulation but now we have the other chair over here if the phase of the receiver phi is different from phi c we have an interference a distortion term that is proportional to the hilbert transform of the modulating signal and that is proportional to the sign of the difference between these two phases so we can understand this sign of phi minus phi c as a gain term for this distortion term again the optimal choice is to have a synchronous receiver to have a receiver where the phase of, uh, is equal to the carrier phase and we will have sine of zero which is zero this makes evident the need for a synchronous receiver because we want to eliminate this attenuation term for the modulating signal and we want to remove this distortion term that is proportional to the Hilbert transform of the modulating signal. Thank you.